spoke all night. He lurked in the shadows, waiting and hoping she wouldn't take a different room. This was her usual room. He knew that. He knew her. Ghost of Me, the new book by Amanda Steele, can be found at Amazon, Kobo, Waterstones, and many, many other places. Spoke all night. Hi guys, it's Andy N. Thanks today for downloading or streaming yet another episode of Spoken Label. As you may or may not be aware, Spoken Label was started in the beginning of 2006, and currently we have well over 150 sessions recorded since then. Although you can find on various networks, the full archive is available for streaming and downloading at Spoken Label. Full stop bandcamp.com. It is a free download or free stream in there. But obviously, if you feel like chucking me a few pennies that way, it'd be eternally grateful to help me keep this podcast going and keep improving my equipment, etc. Enjoy. Speak to you soon. Bye bye. Spoken Label. Hi guys, Andy N. Spoken Label. Back in the house again on Zoom. Got an old friend with me today and we're not going to do a do a travel interview with because after after did the did an epic session with him a couple of years ago, Pete Slater. And do you remember that one, Pete? <laughs> we've done a couple, haven't we? Yeah, we've done a couple. Last one you came down here was in you kept you kept me talking for nearly an hour. I remember that one well. And then the only time yeah. you, lost, you lost your flow was a what was we off with your late wife rang you up and it's dead funny because we're about to wind down and then that ring 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 <laughs> not check your train of thought thing. So anyway, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's always good to chat to you, buddy. Now, obviously, for people who don't know you, do you want to tell them briefly about yeah. yourself? And then we're only here to get you a few pointers today, really. So, tell me about t- tell them about myself. Yeah. What can I tell you? You know, you you, you Stay, of the accident. Hold on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An art school dropout. I went to art school thinking that. It, it, They'd allow me to fly free, and it was worse than being at school taking me A levels. <laughs> so I got back from college and then just bummed around for a while. <laughs> yeah. Started to started to be a bus driver. Think I'll do that for two years until I'm a famous artist. <laughs> that didn't work out. I was still there forty years later. You were, weren't you? Now we met. Was it about Middleton? Wasn't it? Was it ten years ago? About t- nine or ten years ago, Andy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. God. I, I know like, was 59. Yeah, well, I'm 47 now, so he's like, I said, yeah, about right, that, isn't it? Because I thought, well, I wasn't 40. And I knew I met you before I got diabetes, so it was easy 10 years ago. Oh, God, time flies. So, anyway, Pete, so for uh, people who don't know you, um, what, sh- is there anything you need to tell about your poetry? Do you have any recurring themes and stuff? Not really, no. Um, I don't think. Uh, about writing poetry, Andy. Um, at one point, I thought I was going mad because I couldn't stop writing. I remember you telling me, yeah, God. And I had to write it there and then, you know what I mean? And otherwise, it had gone. And then I, lo- I learned a bit of discipline and managed to write a tagline then. And, and that seemed to do the trick. But now I've got a a folder on my computer that's full of poems in progress. <laughs> you really are fantastic. You can be oh, so, good. oh good stuff, man. So I can be I can be writing two or three at, at a time. It depends on how the mood takes me. Because uh, once it starts, it just flows. I don't believe in in um, word block. I don't believe it in it at all. I think that people who want to write. Constantly, uh, uh, living in a bit of a dream world. <laughs> but when it does come, you know, well, people get um, paranoid, don't they, about having writer's block? Oh, and he doesn't at all. Well, I write a lot less now than I used to, but I think the stuff that I produce now is is probably better than it was. But I don't understand the um, the protocol of writing poetry. I am a bit pentameter and all that. I don't understand that. Oh, not fair enough, I'm And I try, to keep, I try to keep it simple. Simple language, you know what I mean? You do. I don't have to be clever with the language. 
The difference is, uh, Pete, you, Pete, what you always do, Pete, is your heart that comes in your writing. And that's why I love you as a person and also your writing as well. So everything you write is, you know, it's honest. And it's, that carries the power. Thank you, thanks, sir. Right, Pete, should we thank get you to read out some of your you. poems for us, buddy, then, when you're ready, then? Yes. Well, I'll start off with one that I wrote. Um, it's not that long ago, actually. I think it's about a year ago that I wrote this. Um, I was watching um, Woodstock on the television. Oh, yeah. And it reminded me of college days because I sat, I enrolled at art college and then uh, four of us went to watch Woodstock in the afternoon. And oh, wow. Yeah. 19, 1969. Wow. This is called The End of Summer. Oh. Take into picture the end of summer and remember misty muesli mornings, lost dogs and lost innocence. Unzip the pup, releasing stale smoke and laughter. Stand stretched tall and yawn, shivering in the dawn, chilly as the sun rises. Smile and nod at passers by with hollow eyes and try to swallow, <sighs> cough, and roll a joint. Ruffle your hair, poke the fire, and draw in the smoke. And remember a joke which made you cry while you were high and laugh. Lie back on dewy grass, blowing smoke rings as Sting sings a homage to another day. Another day of sunburnt ears, psychedelic happy tears, and music, and dope, and friends, and hope. Just another day bringing the end of summer. Thank Brilliant, Pete. Great start, that one, mate. Great, great poem. Certainly, like when I was a lot younger, I was in the early, mid 80s. I could certainly relate to that yeah. in, a different, in a different generation. So that's what's good about that, Kate. Candy. The emotion carried oh, over the generation. Yeah, we were really, really um, festival goers. I can, I can imagine you've been like that back in the day. Because I've seen pictures oh. of you with your bike and bike. You used to be used to big motorbike, didn't you? As well, you show me pictures of them before now. I still have. Oh, you still, still got the bike have. of you? Brilliant. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, I ride a twelve fifty bandit. Good man. Good man. It's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> right, okay, mate. What's your right. second piece? The second one is just um, a, a word of hope, I suppose, for us all, because mm. um, we're too readily led these days, I, I believe. Um, some of the things that are happening these days would never have happened when I was 17, 18. We'd be out on the streets protesting. And we're all soldiers, all of us, and we're the majority. Uh, why we should be frightened of voicing our opinions, I don't know. And I think as poets, or writers, or whatever, it's important that you let other people know that. So this is just called We Are Soldiers. We are all soldiers, molders of the universe, fighting to disperse the curse of monochrome, standing tall upon the dome, upon the home of color. Should we select the butterfly effect and plant our footprints in the sand, or color the walls of corporate halls and forever banish the bland? Or are we destined to inhabit a land of shadows and shapes, faces shrouded in cowls and capes of grey and black? Or will we look back on photographs of carnivals and dance halls where coloured lights and glitter balls fired bullets of reflected colour in a vivid world much duller now by their demise? Compromising rainbows. See, colour is a badge of individuality, suppressed to grey, the colour of normality, uniformity, 
Can we ignore the enormity it brings, singing songs of control? Freedom, destined for the black hole of austerity, introduced with dexterity by faceless men in grey suits, with black hearts and jack boots, ensuring the despairing mist descends, ensuring that our ends no longer meet, presuming we will all admit defeat, believing all is bona fide, then work until we drop. Nice. Fantastic. Perfect. No need then for pensions, but maybe a little apprehension. Could there be a rainbow in a classless sky? Do I see a glint in working class eyes? <laughs> maybe, there's a, maybe there's a surprise there yet. I wouldn't like to bet against it. So shout. Scream and dream of bolder days. Step out of the shadows and fire your rainbow arrows into shades of grey. Change the ways, change the days, forever into sombers. Thank you. Brilliant, Peter. I agree with the sentiment there completely, that one, mate. So, Thank you. I've heard you, I've heard you read that one before, actually. Did you, did you read that one else at the station once? Or did you? I'll see it. At the what? Station? You read yeah. that one, the Scots part, the station. I'm sure I've heard you that one before. Yeah. It's a great piece yeah, anyway. Yeah. So. Some most, of the, most of these I've, I've read at some point or another, I think. So. Brilliant. No, it's still good. Still good. Do you want me to move on, Andy? Yeah? Yes, please. Yes, please, mate. Well, it's funny that the, the way I've, uh, I've placed these points in order, uh, that you should mention the station, because um, this poem was written... Um, because of, of going to the station and Pauline and the what she does, you know, for We Shall Overcome, I think, I think she's a saint, you know, woman. Incredible energy, she, for sure. She works her socks off, doesn't she? Oh, God, yeah. There's no end. No end. Unbelievable. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one's called Homeless Blues. You've probably heard this one before, Andy, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Blues. No haven, no home, only cold stone to lie on. No socks, no shoes, only a can of cheap booze to rely on. Too wet, too cold, too soon growing old. Well, how did he get here? Married, divorced, then gridingly forced onto the street. Defeated, ejected. Reconciliation rejected. So he had the skids. Lost his kids to a myth. That age old myth. The only case a child needs is that of a mother. So why should he bother to fight? A father has no rights in the last resort of a family court. He's hunted down by towny clowns who don't understand there's no demand for a homeless man. Not in these times, when it's a crime to fall on hard times. So he carries his life in plastic bags, sleeping in doorways and begging for fags. Another junkie. Ah, he's just lazy, or maybe he's just a little bit crazy. Judgments made on the fly. Never occurring and wondering why he carries his world in a plastic bag. Dresses each day in the same old rags. See, he's lost his pride, his self-respect, he has no home. His life's been wrecked. No job. No hope. Maybe he thinks a length of rope. Maybe the only solution. He doesn't believe in God. <laughs> no need for absolution. But there's still sun, rain, and holes in his shoes. It's just another day with a homeless blues. Thank you. I wrote a top, top poem myself, Pete. I'm going to read out um, when we meet later on at Randy's night, which is uh, the night yeah. after in Mulkin Zoom at the moment. And I've got one on the homeless at the moment myself, I'm going to share later called Hotel to Hotel which is about um, certain hotel firms, shall we say, 
that turfed a couple hundred people. I was at their hotel recently. They're meant to be caring. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you'll see that later, mate, anyway. So really, I was always wrote with passion that beat. Great stuff. What's your fourth one, my friend? This one is um, about going back to where I was brought up. Uh, when my sister died, I had an uncle that lived in Blackpool. I went to pick him up. And uh, he used to go and visit my auntie who lived in, in Oldham, near where I used to live as a kid. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I I took him to see me, me Auntie Edith, which was very nice. And, and the change in the place was unbelievable. Where I used to live had gone. Where I used to play as a kid, it had gone completely. There was no sign of it, you know what I mean? If you, if you didn't know that it had ever been there, you would have never... You would then never realise. So this is called No Return. These streets don't change, but they seem strange to me. Makes me think, is it right to revisit the past where childhood memories contrast with what I see through aging eyes? Nothing, to, nothing now to disguise the reality of this my old stomping ground where i remember romping round fearless but peer pressured where street cred was measured by how many tales you could tell you hadn't been fighting you fell you've been round to your mates that's why it was late no need to worry mom it was the rule of thumb wherever you were you were at your friends it tidied up any loose ends Gave you a sound alibi. And childhood slipped quietly by. I remember we played on long, hot summer days, only surrendering to night when the light faded and we were tired. Jaded, but we were safe, we were free. There's nothing to fear then, you see. Now I look around and see what's been done to my town. It's tidy, it's clean, but the streets are mean, depressing, compressing memories into rosy colours. The fuller picture shrouded, the harshness clouded by nostalgia's need to feed conformity. While my feet are planted in normality, my memories, the only fatality. I can no longer deny the reality I should never have come back. I only found the lack of caring and the only sharing now is hate. It's too late for these streets to change. And it seems I'm the stranger now. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, I can relate to that. Like it's, um, I know the next time I go down back to Officer Stratford, you know I'm richer from. That's yeah, going to yeah. change because like it's, the way society is at the moment is months before I get down there next. And it's like, it's, when you go down to a place you've not been to for a long time, it feels weird to you. And it's, it's something that the oh, place absolutely. has changed. And, and, or you make you wonder if you change or the place has changed. In that case, I know, I know where, you're, where you're from originally. And it is a very different area to what it was 20, 30 years ago, for a fact. That's why. I'm, so. going, back, I'm going back, what, 50 years? Exactly, and I'm as ever, I've seen the change of 20 years in that area in question, so, but, yeah, no, I agree, make the point, the same, correct, I agree with you. Okay, my friend, it's, it's the fifth and final piece already now. Yeah. Uh, this is just, uh, really, it was written by something my mum said. Um, she asked me to write a poem. And... I said, what do you want me to write it about, Mum? And she said, sausages. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, Mum, it, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? I, said, I, I, I write as it comes. I don't control it. It controls me. I said, I'll try my best. And I, went, I went away and we'd been lo looking at some old photographs, which I love to do. Nostalgia's played a big pet part in me. I'm writing something at the moment. I've got 50 pages written at the moment. Wow. Um, about nostalgia, just about nostalgia. Mm. You know, in all 
phones, happy nostalgia, warm, fluffy nostalgia, the, no, the nostalgia that you don't want to remember. You know what I mean? What, yeah, what are you going to do with that, Peter? Are you going to make a book out of that, Jeff? I have no idea. Um, I, I started writing little pieces about my sister and, and my dad. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, where does all this come from? Because I was always a guy that, that moved through life, you know what I mean? And never looked back. I just moved on and on and on through friends, through people, through times, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, you know, I'm addicted to looking at old photographs. Um, so this is called Olden Days, and it's based around my mum's need for a poem about sausages. And there is a mention of sausages in it, I'm afraid. But she, she did like it. It's called Olden Days. <coughs> Excuse me again. In Olden Days, so my mother says... Life was quite different then. Mills were satanic and all food was organic and your elders were all wise men. You went to school and went in mill. No sick pay then, you couldn't afford to be ill. If you couldn't work, you didn't get paid. There was no time off and no time for play. Everyone worked to live. In days gone by, before a human could fly, life was all shoals and clogs. Life was diluted, the air was polluted, mornings were wrapped in fog. They went to work in the dark, where the only light was a spark kicked up from a dancing clog. And then there was the knocker-up whose job it was to scupper a working family's dreams. And in the damp of morning, he doused lamps and gave warning. It was a start of a brand new day. Gaslights, cold nights, early mornings, burly dawning, shared beds, shaved heads, keeping the lice at bay. Everything was carried by horse and car. While Grandad spat in the fire and farted, barking out orders and scratching his belly. <laughs> but what else could he do? Do it wasn't a telly, no computers, no mobile phones, only the cry of a rag and bone man, offering donkey stones in exchange for old clothes. Times were hard, and a tin bath in the yard was the only treat for us all. Every man wore a hat and women had chats over the backyard wall. There were corner shops and ration books, cobbled streets and haunted looks of men returned from war who had been shot by shells, fought through a living hell and unsure what it had all been for. The women were the bosses then, Regretting the losses of the men who didn't return, he lit a fire in the soul of the world as a whole that still continues to burn. It wasn't all good then, but it wasn't all bad. People got on with it, surrounded by sadness. They had a sense of community, which gave them some immunity from the harshness of the day. At least that's what my mother says, because life was quite different then. Thank you. Great stuff, Pete. That's a great way of finishing this little new piece of yours up, definitely for our audience, that one. So uh, thank you very much. Pete, if people want to find out more about you, where are the best copies? Yeah. Uh, YouTube. I've got quite a few, few things where I've messed about with with music and pictures and stuff like that because i'm i'm very interested in, in multimedia i wish i was a bit more tech-minded to be honest with you because i would love to 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 do a piece somewhere one time um with projection and music and me me being 
<laughs> in a white suit even, do you know what I mean? And being part of the projection, being part of the point. I discussed it with Joy France one, one sort of, but um, nothing ever came of it. And I'm not you man, I'm going to speak to Joy as well. Then I'll have something else. You've just dropped a memory there. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And, and where can people read your poem then? Have you got, so you know you used to have a page on Facebook, didn't you? I do, yeah. Pete Slater Poet. Right, so yeah, that's fine. I'll make sure that one goes on as well for you. But as I said, it's been fantastic today, Pete. As always, my friend. And YouTube is Pete Slater Poet also. Pete Slater Poet also. Brilliant. I was going to ask you then, was it Pete Slater Poet? So brilliant. Thank you for today for that, Pete. So, oh, thanks, for, thanks, for taking, thanks for taking the time out, Andy. I always enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, same for me as well, mate. So, I tell, I'm just going to finish the podcast off and I've got something to go through with you anyway. So, but of course, okay. this is Andy M. Thanking Pete, and we'll see you all soon. Guys. Take care. You're welcome. Thank you, Andy. Spoken Label. Thanks again for listening to another session of the Spoken Label. Our full archive can't be found. Over on Bandcamp at Spoken Label, that's one word, Spoken Label, full stop, Bandcamp.com. And there is over 150 sessions there. So I'm sure that if you've enjoyed this session, there'll be something else there you can enjoy as well. Take care. Bye bye. Spoken Label.